So this is a, an instruction video in response to a lot of the comments that have been made about practicing and getting better at strumming chords or melody and such in Lavender's Blue, but this applies to all ukulele playing. So the first and most common one is that um, I'm too slow getting from one chord to another chord. and. I guess the thing that I want to say about that is this goes right back to deconstructing. So the biggest pitfall you'll have in getting better at this is if you're trying to do too many things at one time in your practicing. Going from the F chord to the G chord is a pretty complex thing to do. You have to go from here to there. So go back to your practice assignments or just make a new one, but think about making that less and less. So F, and if you can't get to the G, there's no point in practicing that whole G. Let's just try F to C major seven. Again, F to C major seven. And until you can do that really well, not likely you can do F to G6 or G. So once you're good at that, then you can make a G6. And once you get good at that, you can make your G6 and then throw the third finger in there to make the G. So deconstructing it actually comes in several different um, modes. One is to do it um, one little piece at a time like that. So we're reducing the number of tasks you have to do. The other one is to do it too fast. And uh, I just wanna to suggest to you, you're gonna get the most gains and the most improvement if you will do it slow enough to be perfect. So, not rushing, right? Not going, oh no, what's the next note? I'm actually doing it slow enough to do perfect. Right? And don't go any faster than that. Set up a rep, like uh, 10 reps or something like that, and perfect. And then take a break for a minute or two and then do it again. Uh, it's actually when you're doing it perfectly, no matter how slow it is, that you make your best gains. And you just gotta trust that that's true, okay? Um, the next thing would be um, people are talking about uh, sometimes they play a chord and they get this kind of muted sound or the G chord, they'll get this. Uh, related to that, a few people are saying that they have to push really hard on the ukulele and it's making their hands sore. These are both similar problems. Um, actually, it's the same problem, but two different accommodations that's happening there. What's happening is your hand is hitting the strings too flat, like this. This finger right here and this finger are coming in too flat. So um, two things are happening here. One. Underneath your finger here, it's contract, you know, you're trying to hit this string right here, but you're contacting these other strings right there. And so it's muting them. Okay. The next thing is, because you're coming in like this, right, as opposed to like straight in on the strings like that, you have to put down more pressure. You have to expend more energy because it's not transferring directly to the strings as well as it could be. So what we need you to do, what you need to practice, is changing your hand shape. You can see that my fingers are coming at this kind of flat like this. And what we want is we want them to be like that, sort of on point. Not like this, but like that. And the way we do this is by simply rolling the hand. You can see I'm just gonna roll my knuckles forward a little bit till I get the right arch. That means my wrist is dropping and coming around just a little bit like that. So power transfer 
is less required because it's coming straight down on the string instead of flat, okay? And you can see that underneath, my fingers are no longer contacting those. This is something that happens with a lot of slow repetitions. So when you pick up your instrument, you go to play this, you say, okay, it's just that much. It's not like you're chasing it underneath or anything like this. It shouldn't feel uncomfortable in the wrist. Just a little bit of a roll of the wrist, just a tiny bit. That's how much the fingers move, not very much at all. Right? It actually doesn't even matter if your hand comes up like this, although we're trying to not do this. You just need to get that from here to there. Okay? And play it slow enough so that you can make sure that that's correct. You might look in a mirror while you play or on a video playback of your camera and uh, take breaks. We tend to over push to compensate for bad techniques no matter what the activity that when we, when we first start out, be it playing an instrument or playing sports or anything, okay? The third thing that you should be doing here is you should be training yourself not to look at your hands. So um, if I'm practicing dilly-dilly or changing chords, there's a tendency to want to look down here and go like, ah, there, and then there, and then there, and there. And, um, well, your eyes have a very specific job when you're playing music. Uh, it's to look at the music and feed your brain the information on what notes and what rhythms are coming next. And if your eyes have to split that job babysitting the fingers and saying, are you in the right place? No, you get over here then you're never going to be able to read music. Some people have said, oh, I get lost, it's too much. And so you need to slow things down again. I'm going to bring my music over. And what I need to be doing is I need to be playing small little bits of this while looking at the music. If you have the music memorized, still look at the music because you're training your eyes to read music. That's a habit. And you're also reinforcing certain pictures on the page equal certain movements on here. So if I were going to play Dilly Dilly, I could look at my hands to begin with to get this set up. F, E, D, C. That's fine. But when I look over here at the page, what I want to do is look at Dilly Dilly and play the F, and then look at the E, take my finger on and play the E, play the D, put my second finger down, and then pick it up. It takes a little time, but it's really worthwhile. So then I go C, B, A, G. I can't emphasize enough. If you slow this down and practice it at a speed that's possible for you to read the music and play, that after five or ten minutes, you will find you're good at this. Um, it's really strange. Your brain will just acclimatize to this. Unrelated to music, but similar story. When I was a teenager, I got to go scuba diving. And it was the scariest thing ever because, um, I mean, we wanted to. It was great. But you go underwater, and they say, well, just exhale and then breathe back in. You have this apparatus in your mouth and a, and a tank and... It's counterintuitive to everything I thought about staying alive. You don't breathe out underwater if you know you're not going to surface and take another breath. That's like getting rid of, well, your life. So you'd sit there underwater at the beginning and you'd hold your breath in. You go, <gasps> and you'd hold out for as long as you possibly could. And then you go like, I got to take a breath. I got to take a breath. And so you'd breathe out and you'd breathe in again as quick as possible. <gasps> and you'd hold that there. It's the funniest thing because... We're not fish. We don't think to breathe. But then what happens is, at about five, six, seven minutes in, you can't stay freaked out about something forever. And all of a sudden, you're not scared. You take a breath out, and you don't immediately suck it in right away. And then you go, oh, wait, this is working. And a strange thing happens. Right about between five and ten minutes, you transition, and your brain just says, oh, this is okay. This is going to work. And you don't, you're not scared anymore. 
learning to read the music is in, and not look at your hands is very similar uh, in that you will play this really slowly to begin with. You go like there's a C for lav, and then you say go up to the next string, E, then now I go to the A, Ders, and there's my G. Okay, and I might just practice that. Look at the notes, C, look at the note E, look at the note A, and look at the note G, but don't look at your fingers, right? And if you'll just do that for five minutes slow enough and it's short enough, then your brain will all of a sudden go like, I know where to put my fingers when I see that. Same thing for Dilly Dilly. There's my F, I'm looking at the music. I'm going nice and slow. E, D, C. It has to be slow enough that you can register what it is and know where to put your finger and it has to be slow enough that you can control your head from looking across down at your fingers and your eyes don't glance down there and you do that for 10 minutes and you might have to do this multiple sessions and all of a sudden it gets better and until you cross that threshold you'll always be looking at your fingers it's sort of a combination of deconstructing it making it simple doing it slow making it small enough and doing it enough times, and then 10 minutes later, it starts to work. Um, even if you have this music memorized, look at the music. Okay, so in summary, let's fix our technique. We wanna make sure that our fingers are coming more, there's more curved, so they're coming more straight onto the strings as opposed to flat. We do this by rolling our hand underneath just a little, not a lot. And then we all need less pressure because more power is being distributed to the string straight down your fingers than if you just had to go like this right and then when we practice them go very slowly and don't look at your hands and if you need to break this into small part go from f to b or just the b note which is c major seven practice doing it without looking really this is about using good technique and training yourself and not look at your hands. And if you can do that after a few minutes, then you can put on G6, right? And if you can do that for five, 10 minutes and not look, then you can do that, that, and then throw that in there, okay? But it requires a little persistence for five, 10, 15 minutes at a really, really, really slow pace and short enough and not so complex that you're getting messed up. You have to be in control of that and then it'll switch for you and you'll be able to do that. That doesn't mean you'll be able to go fast at it, but then the core technique is in place and then you can start to speed it up using correct technique.